I'm Andrew Smith. I'm a writer, and I'm trying to get over it. Uh, I've written three young adult novels that have been published by Fywell and Friends, an imprint of Macmillan, and my fourth, called Stick, is going to be coming out later on this year. Um, the, the reason I'm doing this film is that uh, I was, uh, actually I was talking to uh, blogger friends, a couple of blogger friends on Twitter, I know, um, uh, a few nights ago, and uh, about a response that I had made about this video about uh, warning labels on young adult literature. And, uh, and I thought it was a really kind of a, a, an interesting exchange, and so I offered to do it again. And I said, well, why don't we do it sometime, uh, and we could do this on the subject of boys in YA and books that are written for boys and about boys and by boys. And uh, the, a couple of the bloggers that were kind of involved in this conversation didn't even know that such a thing existed. Well, I thought that, you know, in, in recent times we've had a lot of discussion about the inclusion of diversity in, uh, in works of fiction that are geared towards kids and young adults. And I think that one of the, the big the biggest overlooked elements in diversity is the fact that, that guys do read and guys do write too and, um, and that there are a lot of books that are out there that are actually written for boys and about boys and by boys. And so that's what I wanted to talk a little bit about today. So you know what I really don't like is, um, well I've got some visual aids here. Uh, couple of things I really don't like. I really don't like exclamation points. I also really, really don't like text speak. And I really don't like emoticons. And also Brussels sprouts. And one of the things that I kind of don't like too is I don't like uh, when I run into a blog that's a so-called YA blog about young adult fiction and I look at it and I look through the last 10 or so reviews and all of the reviews are about exactly the same kind of book that was written pretty much with exactly the same kind of characters and protagonist and also pretty much unfortunately written by uh, frequently exactly the same type of author. Um, because I think that there are a couple of issues that are involved there. First of all, that young adult means young adult. It doesn't mean just young uh, female adults. It doesn't just mean young adults who prefer only urban fantasy or high fantasy. It's a really broad spectrum of things. It includes all kinds of people and all kinds of settings and all kinds of situation and I think that a lot of people who claim to be quote unquote YA bloggers really don't blog about young adult fiction they blog about the stuff that's shoved down their throats by publishers or they're trying to one-up their friends and get the first arc from you know, the new hot uh, author who's out there and uh, they just keep talking about the same things over and over again. That's just my take on it. And so when I um, was talking about this with some YA bloggers uh, about the fact that yes, there are really books out there that are written for boys, about boys, and by boys, um, you know, one of the kind of the tongue-in-cheek responses I got from a blogger was, oh, well, so uh, do you mean like you're going to talk about Lord of the Flies? And I'm like, Lord of the Flies, that, that was written before I was even born. There are so many things that are out now that are fresh, that have a, the perspective of guys, and they're for boys, and they're about boys, and they're really important issues, too, that I think that sometimes, you know, a guy needs to talk to a guy. Sometimes a guy needs to talk to his dad. And um, not that I'm saying that that's the only perspective that people should adhere to for these kinds of issues, but it is a voice that's out there that is very often overlooked by um, people who uh, kind of uh, gravitate and hover around the uh, universe of young adult fiction. 
Okay, so um, to, one thing that I, that I wanted to talk about today, too, is that um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I, I watched uh, the president deliver his State of the Union address. And, and again, you know, I really love President o Obama. I love him so much that I would let him sit here on my couch. I would even move Mao for President Obama. I would, uh, I'd go get a tattoo with him. That's how much I love President Obama. But I really think he got some things seriously wrong in his appeal to the masses about education. Um, he recognizes, and a lot of people do, and they focus on this big problem that we've got that's kind of like this monster that's going to eat us and we're being uh, so threatened by the others that we're not keeping up with. And he mentioned a couple of things that kind of stuck out in my mind. Over and over I kept hearing this word innovation as though innovation was the big uh, goal, that, that math and science were going to be the things that would save us forever. Well, the, it's all well and good um, to encourage uh, young people to go into math and science and to say that we need more math and science teachers, but the simple fact is that not everybody is oriented towards math and science and what's going to happen with our kids if uh, we neglect the fact that a lot of kids are more oriented towards uh, words, towards reading, towards art, and towards other kinds of pursuits. The, the thing is that math and science and innovation are really kind of just the tip of the iceberg that to solve the problems that are really facing the world and our society and to give some kind of hope for the future, I think that we need to focus on creativity. And creative, creativity and creative problem solving are really the things that are going to keep our head above the water. Um, math and science are all, they're fine objectives, but what is underlying all of the solutions that we need to kind of embrace for a successful future is the encouragement of creative thought. And creative thought is really stimulated by an emphasis on the arts and on literature and on reading. And so we can't turn a blind eye towards that simple fact that the problem will be solved and it's only going to be solved with creative thought. Without it, we're um, likely to end up turning English into nothing but this. And that's not a good thing. Okay, well, I don't really review books on my blog because that's really not my job. I'm a writer, and I always believe that there's a little bit of kind of maybe conflict of interest, or maybe it's not that trustworthy when you see uh, an author reviewing books that are written by other authors. But still, sometimes I do write about books on my blogs, especially if I, if I feel very strongly about them, or if they're really, really ones that I love, um, or ones that I really want my kids to read. So I'm going to talk a little bit about very recent books that are written for boys and about boys with male-oriented issues and that are written by guys. And I think that it's really important that we get this message out there and that, that book bloggers and book reviewers kind of have a responsibility. If they're going to call themselves book reviewers or YA bloggers, that they have a responsibility to reflect as much as possible and to not just go with um, the big trend, but to go out of their way sometimes and look for those things that aren't face out on every eye level shelf at the local Barnes and Noble. So I want to talk, begin and, and mention a book that I was really lucky to read um, because I got to read an advanced copy uh, way before it was anywhere near coming out a book written by a writer named Joe Lunovitz, and the book's called Open Wounds. It's coming out this spring, um, and it was it just such a great book. It was just absolutely the kind of book that I liked to read when I was a boy. Um, it's, it's, it's even got sword fighting in it, of all things, and uh, lots of good fights, lots of good action, and uh, I just, it, it was, was really a great book. Now, of course, I mean, I have to say that the whole reason why I started 
pursuing the idea of getting my books out there was so that my son would have something to read. And so I have to put in a plug for my books, too, um, The Marbury Lens, which just came out a little while ago. And, uh, and then I've got a book coming out this fall called Stick. And they're both totally different, and they're both uh, about boys and about guy issues, important stuff, um, in my opinion, at least. Um, then also, one of my all-time favorite books of any types, uh, The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexie. Uh, I love that book. Um, and then a great series uh, of books by Michael Grant that began with the book Gone, and now it's in its coming up fourth installment. And uh, just outstanding, great read there. Um, then as far as uh, a, a different format of book, a graphic novel that I really loved um, that came out a couple of years ago, two years ago, I think, um, Stitches by David Small. And then finally something that I think is also important too because in these books that I've just listed um, there's been um, a lot of diversity of the kinds of characters in the books and the issues that they're dealing with and also diversity among the authors. Um, but also uh, uh, another important element as far as uh, young adult male readers is concerned and that's the issue of gay characters in books and uh, a really good one that just recently came out uh, by two amazing authors uh, Will Grayson, Will Grayson by um, John Green and David Levithan um, and then a couple of years ago uh, this book came out and I really love this book Out of the Pocket by Bill Konigsberg um, and uh, a, I think it's a really important book for all kids to read um, a really honest and open kind of uh, a great story about fitting in and uh, being true to yourself in high school. Um, I love this book. And then uh, finally too, another one that was kind of a little bit edgy by uh, the great author Greg Neri, um, Surf Mules, that came out a couple of years ago. Um, I love this book too. So those are some great books that are out there that are kind of invisible sometimes to book bloggers who uh, like to stay focused on either competing with their friend bloggers or just uh, getting the stuff from the publishers uh, that the publishers shove at them uh, time and time again. Go out there a little bit and diversify yourselves and read the stuff that's out there that's important. Um, uh, that represents all kinds of adults, young adults, uh, that come from all kinds of uh, backgrounds and walks of life. And that just, that doesn't just include the subject matter, but includes the authors who put this stuff out as well. And if you're not willing to do that, I only have one thing to say, and that's this.